Hey Stitchers, your girl Chris here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel on social where it's totally cool to be obsessed with sewing. So for today's video, I'm going to be sharing some behind the scenes making of the Hillary Top by Tasuti Fabrics. Now as part of the Make 9 Challenge for 2024, I did want to make a blouse pattern. Now if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I did go ahead and share a video detailing all of my Make 9 plans for 2024. Now, in short, Make 9 is a sort of relaxed challenge which encourages makers to plan out nine different makes for the current year. So in this case, as a sewer, I will be planning sewing makes and of course this year, 2024. Now, as part of that project, I did go ahead and say that I wanted to focus on indie patterns for 2024. Now, I came across to Suti Fabrics sometime, I think, in 2023, when I was aimlessly scrolling on Instagram, as so many of us often do. Now, I spotted their Hillary top and fell in love with this pattern. Now, the Hillary top is like a peplum top with an elastic casing at the waist and a really cool, like, elastic detail at the raglan sleeve that keeps it in place at the shoulder. So, I went ahead and sewed it up and decided to film some behind the scenes footage of the process. Now, I myself quite like seeing a project come together. I like to see it being taken from fabric and pattern choice on one end of the spectrum straight down to finished garment on the other. It's one thing to listen to a pattern review and to see a completed garment, but it's a completely different experience to be indulged in the making process. And I figured that you guys might enjoy it just as much as I do. So I went ahead and filmed the material and I'm sharing with you guys today. And if at the end of the video, you do in fact in, um, enjoy it, then be sure to go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below in the comment boxes, just so I can know whether I should incorporate this type of content into my regular rotation. So just before we get into the behind the scenes, let me share with you guys what I'm wearing. So today I'm wearing Simplicity 9539 or 9359. One of those two numbers, I'll verify it and put it in the description box down below. So this is a Mimi G wrap dress pattern and I made it, I think, in 2023. I think it was early 2023 that I made this dress. Now I made it using Ventana Twill, which I had gotten from Fabric.com before they closed down. Rest in peace, Fabric.com. You really had some amazing fabrics. And these two fabrics are no exception. Actually, it's one fabric. It's Ventana Twill in two different colorways. So I went ahead and picked up, um, I think, two yards of black and two yards of white, intending to make a colored block dress. And this is what I came up with. Now, I do have full details on this make over on my blog on social.com. So if you're interested in sizing, in fit adjustments, and in the overall making process, be sure to hop on over and give it a read. I'll leave the link down in the description box so you can find it easily on my blog on social.com. Now that you know what I'm wearing, let's get into the behind the scenes making of my Hillary top by Tasuti Fabrics. Hey guys, so I'm working on putting together this PDF pattern, which is a Tasuti Fabrics pattern. And this is the, is it Hillary or Hillary? Um, I think I'll go with Hillary, the Hillary top. And I've never made a Tasuti Fabrics pattern before. So I'm super excited about giving this one a go. Um, it does come in sizes extra, extra small, up to an extra large. Um, so it has alpha numeric sizing, but I'm not sure off the top of my head what size band, like the actual measurements that relates to. Um, so I'm gonna look it up and I'll put it in so you guys can see what the actual sizes are on this pattern. So I wasn't sure what cup size to City Fabrics draft for. And I did email their customer service just to inquire, you know, like what cup size they draft for. And I received a response that didn't indicate a specific cup size. Um, it basically said that they draft um, with different cup sizes in mind um, and that I should check the finished garment measurements to get an idea of the ease um, for each different pattern. Now, I don't find that super helpful just because for me, just because the fabric has 
um, enough ease, meaning enough, enough width around the body, it doesn't mean that my cup size will be adequately accommodated because from my experience, when I need to um, increase the bust area of any pattern doing a full bust adjustment, it not only adds width to my pattern, but it adds length over the breast tissue. And so I really do prefer to know what cup size um, a particular pattern is drafted for. Sometimes I do go ahead and skip a full bust adjustment if there is enough ease to go around. But there are other times that notwithstanding that there is enough um, width for my pattern, I still opt to do a full bust adjustment. And this was the case with um, that McCall's pattern. Was it McCall's? No, it was a simplicity pattern. Was it 9702? I'll look back in my um, recent makes and show you guys the number. But the point that I'm making is having the cup size really does help um, make a determination for me what size I need to make and what adjustments I want to make. All right, so I've taken a look at the sizing and my bust is 40.5 inches, which is 103 centimeters, which fits closely to the size large. The waist is 35 inches, which is 89 centimeters, again, size large. And for my hip at 43 inches, that's 109 centimeters, which falls between the medium and the large. So technically speaking, I should be sewing a size large, but I think I'm going to size down in the neckline and the arm side as I do with the big five patterns and then blend out to a size large to accommodate the bust and the waist. I think that will give me a better fit across the high bust area. So I think I'm going to start with that and see where we get. All right, so my pattern pieces have been cut out. This is my front piece. This is my back bodice piece. And um, I decided to do a medium at the neckline and down the arm side, blended out to a large at the end of the arm side and just kept a large for my um, down to my waistline and to the end of the pattern. Now, I've done a couple of flat pattern measurements because, as I said, I've never made a Kasuti Fabrics pattern before. And I think I'm going to go ahead and shorten my bodice pieces by an inch. So I've measured the distance from the arm side down to the waistline. And that is, let's just double check, nine and a half inches. When I measure from where I like my arm side to sit down to my waist, it's just about seven and a half inches. So there is seven and a half, eight and a half, nine and a half, just about two inches in difference. However, I have not marked out my seam allowances on this pattern. From my instructions, it seems as if there is not just one standard seam allowance for, for the entire um, pattern. And so I'm going to go, I need to go ahead and read the instructions more in depth to see what the seam allowance is at the arm side and at the waistline, etc. So just to average it out, if we're working with, say, an inch and a quarter for the seam allowances, taking into consider the arm side and the waistline, then I'm thinking that an inch shortening should suffice. Now, I've also gone ahead and measured my front bodice from my neckline to my waistline, and I got about, I think, 12 inches. This is significantly longer at 17 and a quarter inches, but I know that this pattern has some... Um, blousing because of the elastic now on my back bodice piece my back bodice length is 17 and a quarter inches roughly and the back bodice piece on this pattern is 18 and three eighths of an inch so again i figured if i shorten this pattern by about an inch or so then it should sit fairly closely to where i want it to sit now the plus side to this pattern is that the side seam is pretty straight at the front and the back it's not really too shaped and the um, seam line where your bodice piece joins your peplum piece, which looks just like this, is pretty straight. So if I need to go ahead and nip off just a little bit more once I make up my bodice and try it on, then I think I'll be able to do that easily on the fly. So I'm not too, too, too worried about the length of this pattern, aside from the fact that I'm going to shorten it by an inch. We're going to start the length and shorten process on the Hillary top right at the length and shorten line. So unlike um, some pattern companies, Tessuti Fabrics has given a marking for where you can lengthen or shorten your pattern. 
So I'm going to go ahead and measure the distance. So they've gotten they've got an inch in difference between the bottom length and short line and the top length and short line. So it just so happens that I need to shorten my pattern by an inch. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to cut the bottom bottom of the line right here and then I'm going to overlap it so that the bottom line now lines up with my top line and then I would have successfully shortened my pattern by an inch. So cut my pattern apart through the bottom of the length and shorten line and then I'm simply going to overlap it making sure that the bottom piece is flush with my center front fold piece which is right here and that it covers the top length and shorten line and then I am going to stick it into place now if you need to shorten your pattern by a smaller amount then you'll need to go ahead and put markings in for how much of the um, length you need to remove. So once I've done that, that was pretty easy. I'm just going to go ahead and true up my side seam. So if you look closely, you can see just a little bit of a jig right here at the side seam. Sorry, I don't think you could see. So you can see a little bit of a jig right here at the side seam. Now it's not really such a big deal, but I am going to go ahead and just tidy up my side seam right here. There we go. So this is my back bodice piece and I'm going to repeat this adjustment on my front bodice piece. So again, I'm cutting my bottom line apart. And then, say for example, I needed to shorten this by a half inch. I would put my ruler and measure up a half inch from my cut line like so. Draw it in. This would be the line I need to cover. So I would then take the bottom piece that I cut and line it up with the line that I just drew and then I would have taped it into place and successfully shortened my front pattern piece by a half inch. But because I took a an inch, I beg your pardon, off my back piece, I'm going to take an inch off my front piece. So instead of going to the line that I just drew in, I'm going to go to the original length and shorten line here because I already, already measured the distance between the lower length and shorten line and the top length and shorten line included on the pattern piece itself. So again, I'm going to overlap the bottom of my bodice so that it now lines up with the top length and shorten line. Make sure it's flush along my center front fold line and then stick it into place. And again, I just want to true up my side seam right here. And that's it. So I'm going to go into my mirror now and I'm going to hold up this front piece to me just to check um, how it would look on me once it's sewn up. Now it's not going to be 100% accurate again because I have not marked in my seam allowances but at least I'll get a good idea of where this top will fall once I sew it up out of fabric. All right, so I went ahead and cut out my Hillary top using this broderie and glaze that I've had in my stash for quite a while. I think I might have gotten it from Mood Fabrics a couple of years ago, but don't hold me to it because I'm not quite sure. So this is all that's left back. Once I finish cutting out my pieces, I think I might have had two yards to begin with. Um, I cut my back bodice piece and my front bodice piece with the grain. For my peplum piece, which is this piece right here, I've cut it on the cross grain because instead of hemming my top, I wanted to go ahead and use a scalloped edge that came with this broderie anglaise. I just thought that that would give a really, really cute finish to my top. And so I did cut the peplum piece on the cross grain. Now I cut my facing pieces 
Also out of the Brodery and Glaze, I did consider using a different fabric so that I could use interfacing with it. But in the end, I just decided to cut it out of the Brodery and Glaze. I think this is stable enough such that I can skip the interfacing. And I think there is a tiny strip that runs along the neckline that I can probably get away with um, the interfacing. And so I just decided to use my same fabric to cut out my facing pieces. Now, by the time I got to cut out my sleeve piece, I did not have enough fabric, neither on grain or using the cross grain. And so I ended up having to shorten my pattern just um, enough to accommodate the length that I did have. So I didn't actually measure this shortened piece. I sort of just folded it up until the hemline of my um, sleeve met the the scalloped edge of the brodery anglaise. Now I'm considering doing just a small hack to my sleeve just so that I can have the brodery anglaise finish at the hemline and then do an elastic casing near the hem of the sleeve just so that I can have that sort of balloon effect and still retain the scalloped edge. But I'm not 100% sure yet. I think I'm going to test it out when I go to sew up this pattern and see if I like how it looks. If not, then I'll just go ahead and trim away the scalloped edge and whatever length my sleeve turns out to be, then that's what I'll work with. So like I said, I hadn't measured um, this fold, but you can see it's quite, quite a lot. And if I were to measure it, then that is two inches, just a touch over two inches. So I've shortened my sleeve just a touch over two inches simply because I've run out of fabric. This is what happens, you guys, when you don't um, fully plan out your cutting layouts um, when you're going to make a pattern. Now, I almost never follow the cutting charts provided from the pattern companies. I don't even know why. It's not because I know best, because clearly I don't. Um, but maybe if I had followed the cutting layout, I would have had enough. Um, maybe not, because I haven't even checked the yardage requirements, you guys. I think, oh my goodness, I am such a haphazard sewer, and I thought I was going to make improvements for 2024, but as you can see, I've started out on the wrong foot, but I have managed to squeeze up my pattern pieces, save and accept having to shorten the sleeve pattern piece. So once I sew it up, we'll see how it turns out. So fingers crossed, it looks okay. So it's time to get the sewing started, but just before I do, I thought I should pop on and share with you um, what my pattern piece looks like. So this is the back pattern piece, and it's meant to have interfacing, I think it's called a V-line strip, the instructions say, um, right along the neckline. But because this is broderie and glaze, I've decided to go ahead and skip that part. But what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to go ahead and stay stitch my neckline at about a quarter of an inch, just to help stabilize the curve arm area of this neckline piece and I'll repeat the process on my front neckline piece. Then I'll go ahead and the sewing instructions have you sew your side seams using a half inch seam allowance but because this is brodery and glaze I think I'm going to use um, French seams. Now it's going to be a quite narrow French seam because usually um, when you're using French seams you, you use a five eighths of an inch um, seam allowance but I'm going to go ahead and make it work and use French seams on my side seams. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so I did not make a toile of this pattern, so I'm just doing a quick try on of the bodice just to get an idea of where I am with the fit of the Hillary Top by Tasuti Fabrics. Now, the first thing that stands out to me is that there is a little bit of gaping at my arm side pointing toward my bust tissue. Now, this could be, be because of two things. One, it might mean that I should have done my half inch full bust adjustment, which is the norm for me. It could also mean that that excess fabric is just to accommodate the sleeve. Now, when you're setting sleeves into a garment, the bodice pattern pieces do need to have some ease at the arm side so that once the sleeve is in, you still can move your hands back and forth, up and down, and so on. So it might just be that this extra fabric that I'm seeing here at the arm side pointing towards the bust tissue is merely just ease for my for my sleeve but I won't know that until I've gone ahead and put the sleeve in but so far this has stood out to me as potentially a problem now the next thing that has stood out to me is um, I'm just trying to hold the neckline in place 
where I think it's supposed to fall. Now, based on the pictures that I've seen of the Hillary top, it's meant to sit just below the collarbone area. If I'm holding it in place correctly, then it means that my bodice front piece is still a little bit longer than I think I would like. Now, again, once I introduce my sleeves into this pattern, it will be much easier for me to assess the length of the bodice because then the sleeves will hold the top into place at the neckline and the shoulders and so forth. And then I can better assess the length of this pattern. Now, the instructions will have you um, add the skirt portion of this top before introducing the sleeves. But I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to put my sleeves in first. Then I can try on my top one more time and see if I need to go ahead and nick off just a little extra length at the, um, the, bodice, the bodice length. Now, I had previously shortened this pattern by an inch, and it does seem pretty long based on the pictures that I have seen, and I am quite short-waisted, so it might just mean that an inch was not enough of an adjustment, and I could benefit perhaps from maybe an additional half inch um, shortening the front bodice piece. But again, once I go ahead and introduce my sleeves, then I'll be able to try it back on and share it with you guys so you can see where the bodice will hit where my waistline will fall, and I can go ahead and make a decision about the bodice length before I go ahead and add the skirt portion of the top. So this is where we're at so far. I'm really happy with the broderie and glaze. Clearly, I'm not wearing the right bra, but again, I just popped it on really quickly to see where I had gotten in terms of the fit. So I'm going to head back over to my sewing table and introduce my sleeve um, piece into the bodice piece, and then I can try it on again and share with you how far I've gotten. Right, so my sleeves are in and this is what we're looking like. So I've got a couple of observations. So I did size down my neckline and my shoulder to a medium and then I blended out to a large at the arm side and bust area and kept the large straight down to the skirt hem. Not the skirt, the bodice hem. So I'm pretty happy that I did that. This top does have like a boat neck kind of situation. And I feel like if I had done the size large, then it would have just been too gapy at the neckline. So I'm pleased with my choice to size down to a medium at the neckline on the shoulder and then blend out to a large. Now, the gaping that I shared with you um, in the previous slide, clip, whatever, has for the most part been eliminated by putting the sleeve in. I still do see just a little bit of puckering as it were at the bust and I do think that I could have benefited from a small full bust adjustment but I don't think it's going to bug me too 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 much in this top. Now in terms of the length my natural waist is about right here. So that's maybe about an inch or so. So I do think I could have benefited from shortening this bodice by an additional half inch. But this pattern does have, um, what do you call it, an elastic casing at the waistline. And I guess it's meant to have a little bit of a blousy effect. So I think I'm going to keep it at this length um, and then just attach the skirt portion of the top to it. Now, between the time that I'm talking to you here and the time that I actually do it, then I might just change my mind. But at least for now, I think I'm going to leave the length as is. Now, in terms of the sleeves, I did share with you that the sleeves are meant to be longer. And I did have to end up shortening them by, an, um, by two inches because I just did not have enough fabric. So this is the length of my sleeve so far. So I was considering putting like a casing or something in the sleeve just so I can have um, the gathered effect just a little bit above the scalloped hemline just so I can showcase the natural scalloped hem of the sleeve. Now, I'm reconsidering that. The sleeves are not as voluminous as I thought they would be. I got the impression from looking at the, the pictures that the sleeves would have been fuller, but they're not as voluminous as I thought. And I'm thinking that perhaps I can just leave them as is, just below um, like the elbow length and keep them with a scalloped edge and just keep them loose like this. But again, it's still up for debate and I might just go ahead and change it after. I do also have the option of just removing the scalloped altogether and just hemming it as the pattern contemplates and adding the elastic. 
but I don't know. I kind of like it. I think I kind of like it. But once I put my skirt on, then perhaps I will have a better, a better idea of what I want to go ahead and do to finish off my sleeves. Now, it does look a little bit bulky at the neckline, but I have not gone ahead and tacked down my facing just yet, just because I didn't finish off the, the inner edges of my facing. I need to change the thread in my serger from black to blue, and I haven't done it yet, so I haven't gone ahead and tacked down my facing. Now, perhaps a couple of you are rolling your eyes at serger thread from black to blue. I probably could get away with using the black serger thread, but since I have blue and this is a blue fabric, then I'm just going to go ahead and change it. So next step, attach the skirt portion of this pattern, and then we'll see where we've ended up. All right, so I've been thinking about it, and I have decided to go ahead and shorten the bodice by an additional half inch. So I just measured a line a half inch from the current hemline and I'm just going to cut it right off using my rotary cutter. Thankfully, the shape of this, hem, this hemline is um, pretty straight and was easy enough to just mark up the half inch line. All right, so I went ahead and shortened my bodice by an additional half inch, bringing the total up to one and a half inches shortened in the length of this bodice. And then I've gone ahead and attached my peplum piece to the bodice piece. And this is what she looks like now. So I do think that the waistline seam is still kind of long. This is where my natural waist is, right about here. And this is where my seam is. So probably about another half inch. So I probably could have shortened the entire bodice of this pattern a whopping two inches for it to sit right on my natural waistline. However, I feel like once I get the elastic in the casing, then it will look just fine because it will then cinch in around my waist and give me that sort of fit and flare shaping that I love. Now, I did think that the bodice would have been looser on me. I think with the ease, I expected it to be a little bit more just to create a more voluminous effect once the elastic is in the casing. And perhaps I could have considered blending out from a large to an extra large at the waistline just to give me more volume right at the peplum part. But again, it's not really a big deal. I like how the pattern looks. And in fact, I probably can even wear it just like this, even without the elastic casing. I think it looks fine. But I am going to go ahead and put the elastic in because I want this top to be as close as possible to the intention of the um, pattern drafter, at least for this version before I get to hacking it. Now, I think I sound a little bit hypocritical just because I have in effect hacked my sleeves, but I didn't do it on purpose. It was just because I didn't have enough fabric as you would have seen a, cup, a, couple, la, 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 a couple clips back. So I just did not have enough length in my fabric left over to make the sleeves the full length and ended up shortening them by two inches. Now, I kind of like how they look just like this. I think I told you that already. I like the scalloped edge on the sleeve because it mimics the scalloped edge on the peplum. And so I think I'm toying with the idea of just leaving the sleeves as they are. I think they look kind of cool. And again, because they're not as big and voluminous as I initially anticipated, then I think I can get away with just wearing them kind of loose like this. So I'm going to finish off my casing and then add my elastic at my waistline. And then again, I can review and make one final decision about these sleeves. If I leave the sleeves as they are, then once I have my casing done, then this top will be done and ready to be photographed. If not, then I need to figure out how I want to finish off my sleeves, whether I'm going to do a casing and then add the elastic just above the um, scalloped edge or whether I want to perhaps use shirring elastic. I'm just not quite sure yet. But again, we'll see what happens once I get my elastic in the waistline. All right, folks, there you have it. All the behind the scenes footage of my Hillary top by Tasuti Fabrics. Now you would have gleaned from my video that I did have a moment of indecision concerning this make and the waistline of this make. Now, even though I had made some preliminary pattern adjustments and shortened my pattern by an inch, and then went back and shortened my pattern by another half an inch, I still wasn't completely satisfied with where the waistline was hitting on my body. And I was contemplating just not including the elastic in the casing at all. Now I threw it out for a vote over on Instagram and I did receive some feedback from my sewing friends on Instagram 
and I have made a final decision concerning the elastic in this pattern. But I'm not going to share it with you guys just yet. I'll be back sometime soon to share my pattern review of the Hillary top. And in that video, I will share with you my finished garment. Now, if you're following me on Instagram, then it means that you'll probably have insider information about this make. And if you're not following me, now is the time to go over to my Instagram and hit that follow button. Now, as far as here is concerned, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to go ahead and subscribe to my channel and turn the notifications on so you never miss any of my upcoming videos, including my full pattern review of the Hillary Top by Tasuti Fabric. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, please just give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below and let me know what you guys thought of the behind the scenes footage of this make. Now, until next time, you guys, stay safe, stay cool, keep sewing, peace.